Hi everyone, this is Sharon. Today I am sharing with you my latest design team project for Christy at Everlasting Journals. As I was trying to think about what I wanted to do for this project, I knew I wanted to do Christmas, um, but Christy didn't have any Christmas kits in her Etsy store. So I was trying to think what I could do with um, all of her kits and perfect timing. <laughs> she just came out with a Christmas kit, kit number 33. And so I snatched that up and decided to make a few things with it. So I made a couple of sachets, which I will talk about in a little bit. So I'll set those aside. And I also decided to make some ephemera and an ephemera holder for my Christmas items. So what I did was um, I wrapped it up with some fabric ribbon which I just ripped from a piece of um, a, a larger piece of cloth and that goes nicely with the image. This is one of the images in the kits. She's got like four what I would say uh, journal pages in there. So this is one and then the back cover is another. So I use those two for my cover of my little folio here and that opens up and then these two are the other two journal pages that are in the kit. And so I use those as my interior flaps. I didn't want to do a whole lot of embellishing on them because this is kind of bulky with the ephemera inside. So I just embellished this side uh, with a little bit of fabric, fabric or not fabric, paper ruffle, which I made from one of the washi tapes that are in the kit. I just stitched that down the page there. And then on this side, I just added a little bit of sequins on those stars for some sparkle. I attached these flaps to the cover using some cheesecloth. And I just hinged those and I put a piece, a strip of cloth on the outside and on the inside. So as you can see, with this opened up, I might just work on one side at a time, I think. Um, for the insides, I used some of Christie's background pages um, to coordinate with the Christmas um, kit pages. So these are background pages. I think these are from kit 32, I believe. Um, I'll link that in the description so you're, um, you have it. Uh, so I've got these two patterns as my backgrounds because I don't know if you're like me, but I really like to have something pretty for my storage items. So I try to make them as pretty as possible. Then what I did on the inside on the flaps, I just created these belly bands with, again, some of her washi tape in the Christmas kit. And then I stuck a couple of tags in those, which I will pull out. And you can see on this side, I did the same thing, another belly band. So let's just take a look at those tags. So these are tags she has in the Christmas kit. They're really, a uh, quick, easy way to create something, um, whether it be a gift tag or a tag for in a journal. And you can embellish them as much as you want or as little as you want. So I decided to do a little bit of embellishing. I did some decorative stitching on this little piece of cloth and adhered that to the front of this tag. Added a little string on the top. And then I put some Florentine paper on the back and then added one of the washi strips on here. And that just really works together pretty quickly to form a tag. Here for this one, I stitched around the outside of the tag with some contrasting red stitching. And then just added this little fabric strip with decorative stitching on there. I sand sandwiched that with some packaging paper um, that I roughly cut around the edge to the back side. And then I just backed it with music paper. Added again some of the washi tape in the kit. And then this tag has a ribbon, a digital ribbon on it. So I cut two extra ones and then just um, attached them in the middle and made them kind of three-dimensional. So from afar, it looks like a nice satin ribbon on there. And then on the back, I added another one um, and I just glued that one down flat. And then I created two more tags to go in on this side. So I am going to have fun with this whole little ephemera holder at Christmas time when I'm putting my journals together I can just come in here and pull some items. So here's another finished tag. I just added a ribbon, some tulle and lace on there and that's all it needed. Again I added some 
usually paper on the back, and I just put a little shallow pocket there. So if you wanted to use this even as a gift tag and slip a gift card or something in there, that would be fun. And then here's the other one. So I will slip those back into their holders. Now this middle section, I've got several items here. Um, I decided to just cut out all of the washi strips that I didn't use elsewhere in my projects. And I just took my punch and punched a hole on the top of all of them put them on a bulb pin, and then I made these little tabs at the top where I could hang them from, and they'll fit nicely in here. And as I need to use one, I can just pull them out and use it on one of my projects. And then at the bottom, she's got quite a number of tags in her Christmas kit. So I embellish these pockets with those, and then I fussy cut a whole bunch of these little tags out that I can use for labels in my journals or as gift tags. And I just back those with some of her background paper so that they're not white, but you could leave them white if you wanted to. So I've got a supply in each of these pockets on each side. And then the last two items I put in my little holder here are some really fun little garland. <laughs> so these are all what you could use is either tags or journal cards in her kit. And I shrunk them down a bit so they would be smaller. Let me see if I can find a ruler. Um, so I shrunk them down to about one and a half by about two and a quarter. And what I did to make these, I'll move this out of the way a little bit so you can see it better. Um, I took the images and I layered them again with some of her background papers, some that I thought would go really nicely with all the Christmas images. And then on the back sides, I just used some plain paper here. I've got straw paper and did some stamping on there to embellish those. And if you flip it around, then you can see on this side I did the same thing. So I flipped these Christmas images, every other one, so that the background paper or the Christmas image were alternating across. And then again, I back these with some plain paper, did a little bit of stamping on there. And then I took this green ribbon and just wove that in between the background paper layer and the image layer. And I thought these would be fun to either hang on a tree hang on some hooks, um, even hang on a picture frame, wherever you like to deck your halls for Christmas. Um, they're just kind of a fun little thing to put together. And I did um, a little bit of decorating on these. So I added, again, just some decorative fabric, a little bit of glitter. So now I will have glitter in, in my craft room for the next six months, but it's worth it. This one I added a little bit of lace and then kind of the same thing on this side. Glitter, fabric, and lace. So that's that one. I made two of them. So here's the other one. She's got a lot of um, journal card images. So I used most of them, but not all of them in these little pieces. And this is the side. So that was a, a fun. This kit that she has um, can be dressed up or down, like I said. So I had some fun embellishing some of these pieces, but it's also a quick way to get something put together in no time at all. So I'm just going to set that aside and then bring back my sachets. So I was inspired by Rhonda at Joy Junktique to make a couple of lavender sachets. Um, she had some on her channel. Hers had angel images, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make some of those. Hers, she used um, tea bags, rather large tea bags, but I decided to just pull from my stash of muslin fabric. You could use any kind of fabric, really, to make these. And so I took some of Christie's images, stitched those down onto my fabric, added a little bit of lace, and then used her washi tapes to cinch the top. 
and then I did some little bit of stamping on the back and filled it with some lavender and they smell really good. This one, so this one you could throw into a drawer and it would smell really nice. And this one I added a tie on to, so you could hang this on your tree, you could hang it on a doorknob, um, anywhere you might want to embellish for Christmas. So I did a little craft with me, turned on my camera while I made this one. So if you stay tuned, um, I will show you how I made that. Okay, I've gathered up my supplies to make our Christmas sachet. So for this one, I thought I would um, layer up a piece of lace with the image. If you recall from the other one, um, I had just done a piece of lace across the bottom. And then this is the washi tape that I'm using for this one, so that'll go across the top. Really love that one, it's pretty. And then for the back side, I just thought I would use this Merry Christmas stamp um, to do some stamping on there. So let's work on the back first. Um, just get that stamp on there. Now with my other one, my stamp wasn't real clear, um, but I did stamp that one after I had the whole thing put together. So I'm gonna try to stamp this one first um, on just the single layer. My fabric is kind of a rough canvas, and that's why it, it's not the best for stamping, but I always like to push the limits. So I'm going to stamp this, try to center it, something like that. Give it a good press. Okay, that didn't turn out too bad, so we've got our Merry Christmas on there. And then I will set that aside and then work on this front. Now, um, I cut these pieces out ahead of time and they were just some scraps, so I kind of just took what I had, um, but it worked out pretty well. What I did was cut it about an inch wider on either side of my image. And then the bottom, I think, is going to end up being, I think this is going to be toward the bottom a little bit maybe an inch and a half or so from my bottom of my image. And then I left plenty on the top. We can always cut that off later. Now I want this lace to come in because I'm going to be making, sewing some seams on the side. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of fold that over a little bit so it's not quite so wide. Something like that I think will work really well. And then I want to kind of center it so I don't stitch that into my side seams. I think that looks pretty good. Now this image, I'm just going to do a little bit to uh, round these corners so they're not quite so sharp looking. And then I will also do a little bit of inking I've got some, let me get this out of the way here, some gathered twigs. So I'm just going to give that just a, a slight ink to give it a little bit of depth and give it a little bit more of a vintage look. Okay. So now I'm going to take my glue stick and just glue this down. It doesn't have to be permanent. I just want it to kind of stay in place um, so that it doesn't move around when I take it to my sewing machine to stitch it. So I'm just going to um, get my glue stick here and put a little bit on the back side and stick that down. I think right about there. Okay, I will take this to my machine and then I will be back. Okay, I stitched around my image with some contrasting thread. I like the way that looks. So now my next step is to take my back piece with this right side down and then I'm just going to layer these two together. And now I'm going to stitch around the outside, leaving the raw edges out, just stitch around 
the top, a side, bottom, and the other side, and leave the top open because that's how we're going to fill our sachet with our lavender. So I will be right back. Okay, I stitched around three sides of my sachet. I just used a white thread for that because I don't want that to be as contrasty as what I used here. So I am just going to take my scissors and snip off some of these threads. And what I thought I'd do is take a pinking shears. So I've got this one with a scalloped edge and just cut around the outside and trim that seam a little bit and um, just give it a nice little edge on there. So I'm just gonna go around. And I just am going to do it on the sides. The bottom, I want to leave this nice rough edge on there, torn edge. It kind of reminds me of the straw in the picture, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And then head up this side. Okay, so we've got our sides cut on there. And you can see the back looks like that. So next, I want to fill this with the lavender, but first I know I want to cut this top off. It's a little bit high, and it'll be a lot easier to get that straight if I do it before I fill. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut off, let's see, get my little washi tape here. I think I want that to come right about there. So I'm going to cut maybe five-eighths of an inch off. Okay, so for your purposes, if you're following along, this looks about an inch and a half excess on the top, which is about the same as what I've got on the bottom. So now I am going to attempt to fill this with lavender on camera. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to move this up a little bit. And um, just to let you know, I bought this bag of lavender buds. You can buy these. I got this one on Amazon. You can buy them lots of different places. Um, and it smells really nice. Um, you can buy it by the pound. Now, this is a rather large bag. If I had to do it over again, I would have bought something a little bit smaller than this. I think that one will take me about 10 years to get through the bag. But I poured just a little bit into this measuring cup and I'm going to use my this little measuring cup here to pour it into my bag so I want to fill it I don't know not real tight I want it to be a little bit squishy just because that feels good and it's easier to stitch on it and easier to see your image on the front if it's not overly filled so I think that feels pretty good. I don't know if you can tell it. That's about how much I got in there. So now, I didn't do too badly. A few little sprinkles here. <laughs> so now my next step will be to take this washi tape, and I'm going to be stitching it across the top. So I wanted to um, go over the top so it's on the front and the back side. Let's just pull our other one here, this one. So I stitched that across and folded it over so it's on the front and the top, and that'll seal up our pouch so nothing can seep out. So I'm going to fold this in half. My strip is much longer than what I need, but that's just how I printed it. So let's um, kind of eyeball this and Cut it off a little bit shorter. Okay, so now I am going to place this over the top and then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and stitch right across there so that seals that up. And I will be back. Okay, I have stitched my little washi tape strip onto the top of my sachet. And as you recall, it was a little too long, so I'm just going to snip my sides off. 
Now for this one, I thought I would add a couple of brads at the top so we can attach a hanger to it. So I am just going to, let's see what size, yep, this one. Make a couple of holes in here. Let's see, about there. Okay, and I've got a couple of vintage brass brads that I want to use. So I'm just going to stick those in the holes. And then I've got a piece of twine that I thought would work well for this. So I want to, before I flatten these down, I want to just get a little knot in here. Well, I guess I make my knot first. Actually, let's put a little more length on there. We could put a knot at the end. I'll do that first. See how this looks. So put a knot, and then I'm going to do another knot, and that's what's going to sit underneath my brad. I could probably grab something a little bit less bulky, but I think that will work. So let's flatten that one down. Okay, now this side is going to take a little bit of measuring because I'm going to put my end knot in first. So I think, I don't know, maybe something like that. If I'm hanging out on a doorknob or on the tree, I want a little bit of length there. So I'm going to say probably down here for that first knot. And then we won't cut it off quite yet. <laughs> And then we'll put our second knot in here. Okay, I think that will work. And then I'll flatten down my brad. Okay, now I will just cut this off. So we've got a couple of strings hanging down there. I think that looks quite nice. And this is how the back looks. So as I said earlier, these would be really fun to hang on a tree, a doorknob, or just toss it in a dresser drawer. <laughs> so those are my two sachets that I made using Christie's Digital Kits for Christmas. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for coming along with me today. Until next time, bye-bye.